All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good crypto news stuff for you. And the first thing that I want to talk about is everywhere in the news. NVIDIA says GeForce RTX 3060 is meant for gamers, not crypto miners. So NVIDIA said on Thursday that it's taking steps to make sure its upcoming GeForce RTX 3060 graphics cards ends up in the hands of gamers. The RTX 3060 will be able to detect aspects of the Ethereum cryptocurrency mining algorithm and limit its hash rate by around 50%, the company said in a blog post. This will make the GPU less efficient at mining the digital coin. So they are purposely lowering the hash rate on the RTX 3060 in order to dissuade miners from buying them all up off the shelves and leaving gamers with nothing. Uh, and AMD did a similar thing a little while back. Uh, they started making the uh, um, the 480, and it had the mining variant. They had a few, a few other mining variants, and that means that it had absolutely no ports on the side of the graphics cards, no HDMI, uh, no DVI, etc. output, uh, and you just basically put it into a motherboard or use motherboard risers and then mine with it, and that's all it's good for. So we designed GeForce GPU for gamers, and gamers are clamoring for more. Um, yet NVIDIA GPUs are programmable, and users are constantly discovering new applications for them, from weather simulation and gene sequencing to deep learning and robotics, and mining cryptocurrency is one of them. GPUs, which are important for PC gaming, video editing, and other graphics-intensive activities, have been increasingly difficult to find in stock as the price of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum hit new highs, although not necessarily because of Bitcoin, uh, because you don't really mine Bitcoin with a GPU anymore. But Ethereum, yes, cryptocurrencies are mined using powerful computers, others equipped with multiple GPUs. Um, but NVIDIA isn't leaving cryptocurrency fans out in the cold. The company said it's launching a new CMP, or Cryptocurrency Mining Processor product line. CMP products will be optimized for mining with features to improve power efficiency and airflow, but won't do graphics. They don't meet the specifications required of a GeForce GPU and thus don't impact the availability of GeForce GPUs to gamers. So it's kind of a good idea. So basically they're making a mining only variant of the RTX 360, which could be kind of interesting, particularly if it allows for better power efficiency and airflow, um, because we all know that when we mine a core intensive algorithm like Zcash or something like that, that it really fires up your GPU, something pretty fierce. Now, Ethereum, not so much because it's a memory intensive algorithm, along with uh, like things like Monero, that also don't really raise the uh, the heat of your GPU so much as it uses more memory than it does the cores. But that's pretty interesting. Also, the increased power efficiency would be great as well. So NVIDIA unveiled the entry-level RTX 3060 in January at CES 2021. The RTX 3060 is meant to entice those who are still using older generation chips. And NVIDIA says it offers 10 times the performance of 2016's GTX 1060 and twice the performance of 2018 to 2060. So the RTX 3060 launches on February 25th. NVIDIA said at Thursday it's going to be $329. But a lot of people are still going to buy that for uh, for Ethereum anyway. And I, I, I sort of wonder how this is going to actually detect the Ethereum mining algorithm. Um, whether it's just software that does that or if it's physically hardware somehow. Um, and... I wonder if there's a way around that. Likely there's probably going to be some kind of software uh, that will sort of get around that somehow. I, I don't suspect that that will be like that for very long. I'm sure somebody is going to be very interested in creating some software for that. Um, but that's about it uh, for that one. So basically, they're going to create a uh, mining variant only of the 3060, which is going to be great. Uh, but... I think people are going to be able to get around that with some kind of software hack of some sort. Uh, but moving on to some different news here. Debut Canadian Bitcoin ETF nears $100 million in volume in the first few hours of trading. So in the past couple of videos, I've mentioned that there is a, a Bitcoin ETF for the very first time in the world, uh, and it's Canadian. So basically, there was a Canadian e ETF that popped up, and I think there was another one uh, with it as well, another smaller one. 
but it is the world's first Bitcoin ETF. So the first Bitcoin ETF in North America, TSX's purpose Bitcoin ETF, had a gangbuster debut today, trading nearly 100 million in volume. A Bloomberg report noted that the ETF saw over 80 million in volume in the first hour of trading, though it's since slowed significantly with a rough, rough, roughly excuse me, I can talk, another 15 million in volume between BT, uh, BCTCCB, the Canadian dollar denominated units, and the BTCCU, the American do uh, dollar denominated ticker, as these are pretty much derivatives as Grayscale uses those as well. Um, but uh, one processed uh, 7,905,000 units priced at $10.28. So again, you're just buying these fractional shares of Bitcoin. And then the other one produced, uh, the American version produced uh, 1,312,000 units at $10.27. Uh, so in a press release today, ETF provider Purpose Investments founder and CEO Sam Seif said that the company believes Bitcoin has a promising future. They say, uh, we believe in Bitcoin as the largest and first asset in the emerging cryptocurrency ecosystem. It's poised to continue its growth trajectory and adoption as an alternative asset, further cementing the investment opportunity it presents. Purpose Investment website notes that the fund is currently backed by 85.34 Bitcoin and more Bitcoin will be bought proportionately to the quantity of purchased shares. Curiously, Purpose websites uh, list Ether Capital, an Ethereum-focused hedge fund, as a partner in the ETF offering. <clears throat> So uh, this ought to raise the price of Bitcoin a little bit. Uh, now, they're only sporting about 85 Bitcoin, which is still quite a bit uh, in terms of uh, the, since the price of Bitcoin is over $50,000 now. But it's only 85 Bitcoin. So, you know, in the investment world, that's really not a lot. And it's not surprising that it that it's a lot. Uh, I think if if there was an actual United States ETF, I think there's there's a lot of larger institutions that would be wanting to get in on, on that. However, this Canadian ETF does still trade in American dollars, so institutions can still trade just via American dollars as well. Also, uh, to note that um, yesterday's video, I talked about how um, MicroStrategy is looking to buy $1 billion in Bitcoin, and they were hoping to do that by Friday. So today uh, being Thursday, uh, they might actually, by the time I'm making this video, it's Friday, uh, but they're supposedly going to be buying that today on Friday. So we'll have to see if that has any kind of effect on Bitcoin on the price uh, of the market as a whole. I mean, buying $1 billion of Bitcoin outright should raise the price. However, all of these big companies and institutions buy them over the counter. But with that, uh, basically over the counter, so the, these various exchanges, I mean, uh, Coinbase has one, Kraken has one, and then there's various other ones that don't have exchanges and they're all over the counter. So they basically buy them from people and and then hold on to them when a big company wants to come along and buy 10, 20,000 Bitcoin at a time, and then they give it to them. However, another thing, uh, the way that these over, -count, over the counters get their Bitcoin is, well, exchange fees. So Coinbase, every time that there is a transaction, somebody is taking a little bit of money from them and somebody is, is getting a little bit of Bitcoin taken from them uh, when, the, when the sale goes through. And that little bit of Bitcoin goes into Coinbase's coffers and that's their profit. And then they can sell that in bulk. However, if they keep selling all of their Bitcoin holdings to these companies who are holding on to them for the long term, eventually all of those fees going back and forth into the exchange just keep going out and going out and going out and there's less and less and less Bitcoin and there starts to become a supply crunch on uh, exchanges and we can actually start to see that now if you look at the exchange holdings of Bitcoin it has been going down so moving on here, U.S. government fines crypto payments firm BitPay for servicing sanctioned countries. Oh, BitPay, you third party in a peer-to-peer -peer system. You're totally useless, but uh, oh, BitPay. Bitcoin payments processor BitPay today agreed to pay a $507,000 fine to the U.S. Treasury's office uh, for apparent violations of international sanctions. According to OFAX notice, the agency found that BitPay, an Atlanta, Georgia-based crypto payments portal for online merchants founded in 2011, facilitated payments in uh, nation states subject to U.S. sanctions, among them Cuba, North Korea, Iran, 
and Syria between 2013 and 2018. The settlement is yet another reminder that although Bitcoin's decentralized network is above the law, centralized crypto companies are still very much subject to it. BitPay handles payments for merchants that want to sell goods and services for crypto. When customers buy things in crypto, BitPay handles the paperwork and facilitates the transaction, then converts that money into fiat currencies and hands it over to the merchants. The firm allowed people in sanctioned regions to place transactions worth cumulatively $129,000, found OFAC. So BitPay in a little bit of trouble there. Moving on here, why Bitcoin is beating gold as a store of value in one chart. So it's still accurate to call Bitcoin digital gold when the real thing is becoming less valuable. The gold, the gold Bitcoin ratio is at an all time low, meaning that gold's price relative to Bitcoin is at its lowest point since Bitcoin was created. It's mostly due to Bitcoin's ongoing bull run. It now takes 29.63 ounces of gold to buy a single Bitcoin. So nearly, um, nearly two pounds of gold. At the height of the last Bitcoin bull run in December 2017, the number was 14 ounces. A store of value is something that can be held on without depreciating in value. Cars, which depreciate as soon as you drive them off the lot, are bad stores of value. Gold, a precious metal that doesn't decay, is a classic store of value. Investors look for currencies, metals, or other assets to serve as stores of value, particularly at times when inflation is high or other markets are getting pummeled. So basically the price of gold going up, 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 and then down, down, down. Meanwhile, the price of Bitcoin is just consistently going up in price. And this is just over a um, well, two year period there starting in June 2019 or so, maybe a little bit before. And you can see the all time high of gold there looking at maybe what, $2,100, 20, 2050, um, and now just going down. So it does appear that a lot of people are taking their money out of gold and putting it into Bitcoin, uh, which makes you know total sense. I mean, the price of uh, Bitcoin is is just straight up um, exceeding it uh, dramatically. The gains are, are, are far better. Uh, not that I uh, really want to FUD on gold because gold is, well, it'll always be gold and silver, etc. But uh, Bitcoin gains, just plain and simple better at the moment. Uh, moving on here, Congress is blaming Robinhood, not Reddit. So Robinhood and various other investors had to go in front of Congress today. It was all over the news. There was a bunch of live streams on it. And that was over the GameStop uh, fiasco with Wall Street bets. So Vlad Tenev, Robinhood's CEO, very much occupied the hot seat today in hearing before the House Financial Services Committee over January's market volatility. Another representative seemed particularly interested in putting the screws to Reddit CEO Steve Huffman, and many seemed to give Keith Gill the same props the rest of us did. Gill, in all fairness, was uh, the most likable character involved, introducing, uh, introducing his remarks by saying a few things that I am not. I am not a cat and I'm not an accredited investor. Gill, who really started this chain of events by posting about his investment into GameStop in June 2019, even doubled down on his opinion that GameStop remains a good buy today at current prices. This is despite the fact that wild GameStop trading has attracted criminal investigation. That lack of scrutiny towards Gill and Huffman, the CEO of Reddit, uh, does not much uh, does much to quell excuse me widespread fear that the events surrounding explosive trading in GameStop shares at the end of January would kick off probes into social media platforms' as role in potential market manipulation. This is even as the House Antitrust Subcommittee announced uh, today more hearings to scrutinize the biggest players in social media. Reddit for now seems him seems to have flown under the radar, and it's really not Reddit's fault at all. I mean, simply they just host a website and you make your own subreddits and then you talk about it. Though broadly, uh, Republicans were more lenient than Democrats in addressing Robinhood's activity, especially the firm's controversial shutoff of uh, buying, not selling of GameStop and other high volatility stocks, everybody wanted answers from Tenev, uh, the guy from, Game, uh, from Robinhood. The nature of Robinhood's revenue model, which is based on the sale of order flow, which means that you are the product, not Robinhood, uh, while advertising itself as commission-free, fell under mass scrutiny as its dependence on a $3 billion injection in capital to meet collateral requirements. I believe a vulnerability was clearly exposed in your business model, said Congressman Anthony Gonzalez while questioning Tedev. We just can't live in a world where my constituents can have their shares liquidated if you can't make a capital call. Many called out Robinhood's claims to be busy de uh, democratizing finance. Tedev consistently pushed the figure of $35 billion as Robinhood users' total gains, which Representative Jim Helms said, you and everybody else schooled in finance though is meaningless without a rate of return. 
Uh, so very interesting things going on there. Um, and a lot of attacks um, against all these people. And they're basically in the hot seat at the moment. And so basically the three main people that were um, consulted, I suppose, in, or grilled in this was Vlad Tenev, Robin Hood's CEO, um, and then the Reddit CEO, Steve Huffman, uh, was also. And then Keith Gill was essentially the one who started the GameStop movement. And everybody liked Keith Gill and Steve Huffman. They didn't really have a problem with them. Who the people have a problem with is Vlad Tediv, who basically says that no, uh, the, the, the big capital hedge funds did not tell me to do this. I did this for liquidity reasons. I did this on our own accord, which I don't think anybody believes. It was pretty clear that a lot of hedge funds that are above Robin Hood, who they sell their data to, basically told them to, hey, you got to shut off buys for this because we're losing a lot of money. So just make everybody sell it. And that is a major problem. And that's why Robin Hood has a one star app rating on Google now. And um, <clears throat> they definitely deserve it. So moving on to coin market cap here, we are at $1.5 trillion market cap, a $957 billion Bitcoin. So we're nearly at that $1 trillion mark for Bitcoin. I think that's going to be a big day. It's, it's sort of an arbitrary number. It really doesn't mean anything. But having $1 trillion market cap in terms of Bitcoin uh, will put Bitcoin as one of the biggest entities in in the planet i think apple has a one trillion market cap and soon they'll be bigger than that uh but either way one trillion dollar uh bitcoin will be incredible so 1913 dollar bitcoin so we're sort of holding on to those all-time highs uh bitcoin you can see is a little bit down from that 52,000 or so but ethereum still holding on pretty well to its it, close to its all-time high binance coin now skipped basically and is now in third position at 269 dollars you can see it just going absolutely crazy here uh with the market cap of $42 billion. So Binance coin uh, is up in a 24 hour period, 62%, which I don't know if that's going to last. Uh, I'm guessing tomorrow that's going to be on, on the downward, uh, but we'll have to see. Who knows? It, it is the world of crypto after all. After all, a couple of days ago, I thought we probably wouldn't be going over 50,000 just yet. Um, we'd probably be bouncing off a little bit. And then I wake up to the next day and it's $52,000. So it's just one of those things. Hey, I'm glad to be wrong about XRP kind of getting shoved down a little bit as Polkadot uh, and Cardano are well above it now. But that's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the news. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel, share the video, hit that bell button too to get notifications. My social media is in the description below. Give those a follow if you get the opportunity to do so. Channel memberships are active. Click the join button below the video. Get yourself a badge. Soon there's going to be perks for that. Right now you just look 32% cooler when you comment on the channel and you have that badge. But hey, those are pretty good gains. So, you know, don't mind me. But uh, that's all I have for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. As usual, see you guys next time.